Hello friends, my name is RagePanda1, and I am here with the much requested build guide for the Sheyun clan. As you can probably tell, I'm still a little bit under the weather, but you know what, you guys deserve it. Now there is a lot to talk about in terms of the female Sheyun. Not quite so much with the male, a lot of people are using the female extremely wrong, or they're accusing her of not doing much when they're just not really realizing what's going on. So in order to clear that up, I'm gonna make you wait till the end of the video, and I'm gonna start with the male. The male Sheyun has a very unique build that I like a lot, and it also can work on the female depending on what you want to do, but we're going to be using Brutal, and in my case, Energetic. I pick Energetic because I don't have healers on my second team, which is where my male Sheyun will be until I get enough of him to move him on up. If I had healers, I would be going for Honorable. So, Brutal and a defensive trait followed by Agile or Rapid Shots. Rapid Shots is actually stronger than Agile, so if you don't have it on your team already, then you'd want to put it here. Although, if you have your team buffing traits on your frontliners, like you probably want to do, then you would use Agile here so he can be even more of a fast boy. And I know people like to talk about soft caps and all of this good stuff. Soft caps are not hard caps, and it's still good to maximize what you're getting, especially when other traits are not going to do much for you at all. And to top all of this off, the one that I chose for my hybrid slot is Furious Thunderbolt from the Thunderlord clan. Not a trait that you see used very often, but with the way that this guy works, it's going to be extraordinarily good, especially if you find yourself fighting a female Bjorn Krieger. She's going to have a ton of fortitude, you're going to get a bunch of procs that are going completely past all of that, and you're going to be doing like triple damage per swing when you get your procs to align properly, and that's going to feel real dang good. Now the nice thing about this guy is that you can really just put him in any team and he's going to perform pretty well. He will dive the back line and you do need to be prepared to have some sort of support for him, whether it might be shields or minor healing or just a bunch of stuns that are going to keep him alive. Any of those things can work fine. He just doesn't want to be back there all by his lonesome, getting eaten alive by an entire team. Also, it's important to note that he's extremely good against boss fights with all of his active and ultimate percent health damage effect. Those are going to be extremely strong, and he's going to be great at killing bosses. In fact, we have a really strong team that somebody could be making right now. If you want to be actually killing bosses, 100% killing them, then you would go for the male Warbringer. The male and female Sheyun, the female Thunderbolt, and a female Trevane, and you're going to be doing a lot of good work. Of course, there's other options that fit in there too, and if you have one that you like better than those, then feel free to use them. But I would warn you, don't skip the female Sheyun in that group because she is going to be a key member, and you might find out why in just a little bit. If you do want to maximize this character, aside from being on boss fights, uh, when you're in PvP, giving him a team that's going to pull the enemies together can make it easier for him to hit the entire enemy team with his line attacks, which he has in his ultimate and his active skill. And if you're hitting multiple people with the line attacks from your ultimate, ooh boy, you're going to be doing a lot of damage. A lot of damage. So is this guy worth building? Absolutely he's worth building. I think he's extremely good. They kind of just are in their power creep phase right now. All of the new clans are coming out being extremely good. He's not quite as good as the Bjorn Kriegers and the Akuna were. He's not completely broken, but he's extremely fun and extremely good and very much worth investing in. Even if he does end up on one of your second teams, that's going to be used for events and boss fights and that sort of thing. Now for the female, I keep hearing a bunch of rigmarole about maybe her passive doesn't work right and I keep asking for videos of it, but nobody's producing any. And if you have and if you've got them, then send them to me. My link for my Discord is in the description as always. What I assume is actually happening, because I happen to know the community fairly well at this point, is that people are not using defensive traits and then they're rushing her in there and she is a little bit by herself and she gets 100 to zeroed and when that happens you don't get your life saves. It's not like female Devala where it just triggers and you'd get to be alive and immune and it's great. Uh, uh, with hers if you get bursted, you get bursted and you are dead. The benefit though is that if you are fighting somebody like the Phoenix who is going to do an execution, well you're already beyond your life saves at that phase anyway so she's not canceling any of them out and it doesn't hurt you in the slightest, you don't care. So there are pros and cons to both of these, and before I talk too much about the rest of her abilities, we'll get right into the trait build, I know that's what you're here for. You must use defensive trait, and that's right, I put an S on the end of that, because I mean more than one. She doesn't even scale that well off of strength, she's got a little bit of it on her ultimate, it is not her main feature. It is nice to have, it is not her main feature. 
You want to have energetic and honorable on this character at all times. There are zero instances where you will be better off skipping those traits. If you're thinking to yourself, she's my DPS character, I'm gonna go all DPS traits. She's not gonna do anything for you. She's going to die and you're gonna have a bad time and you're gonna say, this character sucks. I can't believe anybody ever said she's good. And it will not be our fault. It'll be your fault because you're not putting defensive traits on and then you die and then you feel bad. I don't want you to feel bad. I want you to feel good. So please listen. Aside from that, since she doesn't really scale off of strength all that well, she does a little bit. Yes, she does a little bit. She could be a good spot to put some traits that you need for your team buffs like hulking or sanguine or rapid shot. But because she has so many of her decoys that she pops out, I think that having rapid shots or agile and also the thunderbolt trait could be a good build for her because it says that your dudes get to do all the stuff that you have and they have all the stats that you have and if you've got three or four decoys out and they're all blowing people up with thunderbolt traits and attacking extra fast with their agile then i think that that could be decently strong however if you wanted to go for brutal and steadfast to make her even more tanky to ensure that you're going to get the full advantage of your life saves as time progresses through the battle I think that's a fine build too. It just depends on what you're trying to accomplish because this character can be used as a frontliner. When I say frontliner, I do not mean people who are standing in the front row. That's not what that means at all. Not even close. Frontliners are people who are strong enough to stand there and take damage and be a tank for your team. Can't call them tanks because there's a class called tank. But usually they're tanks or warriors that are being used as your frontliners. You want to have at least two of those on every single team that you build. You need to have two of them on every single team that you build. That is not a guess. It is just 100% definitely better to do that. Now, frontliners don't always have to be a warrior or a tank. Female Devala worked pretty good for that during her tenure of being awesome. This character could do pretty good at doing that. But if I was going to do that, I would be going brutal, honorable, energetic, and steadfast to give her an extra chance to survive when she gets into those dicey situations. Now then, I've also heard people complain about her performance and say that maybe she's not doing everything that they want her to do. Well, have you noticed the fact that she has a charge at the end of her ultimate that when that lands, it increases the damage done to the enemies by 35% for four seconds. This effect can stack. That means if you're on a boss fight and you're guaranteed to hit that boss with both of those, then you get 70% damage increase for four seconds on your entire team, and you might, you might just still have out your immobilize that maybe you cast, and maybe your passive decoy cast, and maybe the two that you got from your ultimate cast. And now, everybody on your team is doing 70% increased damage, and you are going to do 240% of that damage that occurred in that time period, and you're gonna have a really good time and see a really large number. You need to have her on a team where everybody else is contributing and doing damage. She's gonna help them do that. But she is not a lone wolf like the female Devala was. She needs to have people on her team. She likes to have a little bit of support. So if you're not seeing her doing any damage numbers, then there are three issues that are going on. Number one, you're not appreciating the fact that she's buffing everybody else's damage. Number two, you might be killing the enemy team before she has a chance to get immobilize up and get the extra burst damage, which is where she's gonna get most of her damage. And number three, you might just not have her on a team with a bunch of other people that do a lot of damage which she very much wants to be a part of. Now defensively, aside from the fact that you need to have defensive traits so that you can get full advantage of her passive, you also need to appreciate that her decoys are taking the heat off of a bunch of your other team members for an extended period of time throughout the battle and they are saving you damage that you would normally be taking on your regular characters. This does not show up on the after action report and just because you're not seeing it on that after action report doesn't mean it's not good. It's People still don't use female Bjorn Krieger. They still think she sucks. How can you possibly say that? I don't know how you possibly could, except that you just don't appreciate all of the extra stuff. You're not looking at the big picture. She is going to be a victim of that. Female Shayun is going to be a victim of that. But if you're wise and you're using her the right way, she's going to do crazy stuff, especially in boss fights, also in PvP. Yes, she's worth summoning. No, I'm not gonna say one of them is better than the other because that's not how it works. People, stop asking me that. That is not how it works. You don't just get one of them is better than the other one. I have to know every trade on your team, every character that you're using, which team are you putting it on? What is the goal of the team? I gotta know all of that stuff before I can tell you which one is better. 
because one of them isn't just better. I get that sometimes there's a guy who's really good, like male water and sun, and then maybe the female is not quite as good, and except that she is really good, especially now that anti-heal is so strong, she could be used a lot more than she is, but still, that's not the point. I get it. Sometimes there's one that's really strong, but that's not how you should be approaching looking at these characters. You should be looking at them individually and seeing if they fit on something that you're trying to do, if they solve a problem that you're trying to solve, or if you just think they're cool and fun to use. And one last little tip for her, when I say that she wants to be on a team of people who are doing a lot of damage, I particularly mean with really strong active skills, that makes a huge difference because you're doing your active skill, you want the damage that you're boosting to be from strong active skills. Going along with that, you also want your frontliners to be capable of doing a little bit of damage to help that go even stronger and go even harder for you. So please, I implore you, look at the big picture on this one, please, she's so good. Do not take yourself out of the fight by not even trying her. She's so good, they're both good. Have I said it enough? Are you mad? Did you leave? I hope you didn't leave. If you didn't, then I, I really appreciate you. And if you appreciate that I'm still making the video, even though I'm very sick and my voice sucks right now and I just want to get better so I can stream, then please like and share below so I know that you've appreciated me in that way as I also appreciate you. I hope that I've given you all the information that you needed. For now, I want to thank you for watching. I have been Rage Panda one and I will see you in the next one.